I'm Tim Brandner. Welcome to Capital Views. We're here with Representative Liz Vasquez of Anchorage, who is co-chair of the House Energy Committee. Uh, well, thanks for joining us, Liz. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me here. Liz, you, um, uh, you have obviously had a long interest in, in energy issues and electrical transmission issues, utility issues. You were on Chugach Electric's board for yes. how many years? Six years. I served six years on uh, the board of directors of Chugach Electric, and I was uh, chair for a while. So you must have interesting observations and things to say about the state of our electrical utilities and energy systems. Yeah, and um, well, I mean, my interest when I was chair, we started the ball rolling in the Susitna Hydro Project. In other words, nothing had been done since the 80s. We went down to Juneau, got our first appropriation to update the studies on, on that particular project. and. And of course, that just started the ball rolling. Now, whether we need to pursue that at this point because of the fiscal crisis is a subject of debate, and I guess we'll have to look at the numbers and, and refine our ideas about that project. But I also was very aggressive in uh, implementing a conservation program for our ratepayers and uh, had uh, insisted on monthly reports with regard to that progress. And mm -hmm. so one of the things I recently am looking to is how do we make our state agencies uh, conserve more m energy? How do we get more uh, energy efficient? Yeah, I, I'm surprised that there was a, uh, a report done a couple of years ago about how much energy state public buildings use and, and why can't they be more energy efficient? Well. I'm a little surprised, but I think I'm going to be introducing a resolution on that subject pretty quickly here. Yeah. Because I, you know, um, this is the time to look at areas where we can be more efficient. Yeah. And Alaska Housing Finance Corporation does have a nice loan program for state agencies, and state agencies should take the opportunity. But I, th those are just examples. We worked on getting the utilities working together. Um, that was a passion of mine. It seemed that we have um, six, seven utilities in the rail belt, very inefficient uh, model. Uh, everybody building their own, you know, power plants. Mm -hmm. and, and so now we're, we're looking at getting in to a more unified system through an independent power provider, uh, hardening, also strengthening our transmission lines. Um, we're getting new sources of generation, but we don't have a strong enough transmission line to get that energy back and forth on the rail belt. So. And I guess even if it got to Sydney, that we still haven't got the infrastructure in place yet to really efficiently use that. Well said, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So we're looking also, um, one of my areas of interest also is hardening or strengthening uh, the transmission line so it can withstand sun flare activity. Um, few people are thinking about this, but should we have a sun flare activity such as we had back in 1854, um, or our electrical equipment would just not function? That would be our computers, our cars, our cell phones, uh, electricity, heating. It's hard to imagine what life would be like without we would become us, so accustomed to these things. It would throw us back about a hundred years and what most people don't realize should that happen it's not a matter of being down for a couple of days or even a week or two. Um, I've been informed that in order to get back the grid up um, we would it would actually take close to a year. I, I can't imagine Alaskans not having you know. Cell phones. <laughs> Internet. Yeah. yeah, well said, well said. But even and cars might not operate in, in a situation like that? Yeah, because most of our computer, uh, most of our cars now have computers unless they're real old. And likewise airplanes. Yes. Oh yeah, we would really have problems. Now, if we're isolated, we're not connected to the lower grid, so if our grid was the only one to come down, uh, we would be in a better position to get help from the lower 48. But should part of the United States or all of the United States grid come come yeah. down, and it could because of a sun flare. Um, we have two Senate reports, by the way, which I'm going to have my staff pull up and um, start the discussion in the legislature. And there is a novel that was written on purpose 
I believe it's the second after it's cold, and the I talk, have it, yeah. and it's about what would happen if we had a sun flare, and we'd yeah. have no electricity. I, th I think about these things. I, I was just thinking in the Capitol building, there's two old telephone booths on the ground floor of the Capitol building. Now, who remembers telephone booths? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find a public... And today, and I, I was walking along, and I looked at this, and I picked up the phone to see if it was working, and I, I don't think it is. Yeah. I think they're just there as museum pieces. Yeah, yeah. But someday we may need things like that. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. happened in 1856? Was it? 1856. You can Google that. Yeah. And what, what exactly Well, the tele back then, they had telegraph lines, and they came down. I mean, some of them burned up. But yeah. people didn't have cell phones, they didn't have TVs, they didn't have electricity, they didn't have... They didn't have automobiles. Yes, yeah. So it's a real big issue, and it's something that I like to bring some attention to. It's kind of not in most people's radar, so to speak. Are there things you can do to, to safeguard our system? Uh, yeah, as I understand, heart, it's called, quote, heartening the, uh, yeah. the grid. Yeah. yeah, so while we strengthen our grid, we should ensure that it could withstand a sun flare. So, yeah, so if we build new transmission lines, we could, we could build them in a way that we know that they're going to be safe. Yes, yes. And uh, also, a fusion bomb could cause this, uh, the same EMS effect. Same thing. Yes. Huh. Electric magnetic uh, effect on electrical equipment. Well, it's amazing how vulnerable we, you know, we, we uh, could be that we don't realize. Something sobering to think about. Well, you know, yeah. um, that's the role of leadership, is to look beyond the horizon, you know. What can we do to ensure that our society, or in this case, Alaska, it, you know, it maintains a healthy viability, you know? Yeah. and. Uh, uh, so there's some issues we need yeah. to look at. Well, well, Liz, thank you for being here and joining us. Well, thank you for having me, and I'd be glad to come back anytime. Yeah, thank you. And I'm Tim Bradner, Capital Views. Thank you for joining us.